that were rigid about that. Um, and if it's not right, you hear it from the fans. You know, no, Definitely. it says in the Marvel Handbook that Daredevil was six foot four, and according to your, you know, so uh, <laughs> so uh, with our stuff, what we are more comfortable with is smaller than that. I'm not sure it's one eighth. We don't know exactly. It's about one seven. Yeah. But but it's like um, nine inches because we got we were doing them all the time. We got smaller and smaller, and this is what we're comfortable with um, because to some for us. Uh, there's just less real estate to cover when you you know when you're working on it. It just seems sometimes a, a 12 inch piece will just seem unfinishable, and people say, "Well, do it 10 inches, 12 inches. What's the difference? It's a massive difference in a sculpture as far as the bulk and the surface mass of area, um, especially if you're doing big characters like we were with the Hulk and Juggernaut and these guys. So it, it's we don't use a, an exact scale, but but all our stuff is about the same scale, and, and it's and it's nine inches, uh, nine or ten inches. It's, it's ma'am. Going back to the using the aluminum foil, mm -hmm. can you re address that? Like yeah. you're saying, and when you bake it, sometimes it's better. It's not very thick. You don't want the internal mm -hmm. cracks. Right? Exactly. You put the aluminum foil over the wiring and then put the clamps on. Mm -hmm. that? Exactly. Like yeah. we made the armature, and then you can see right here there's aluminum foil, and so we just crunch it yeah. down as tight as you can. Uh -huh. And then I might even get another piece of uh, flora wire and wrap it around the aluminum foil so it's never coming loose, you know. Uh, Did you super glue that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. We use a lot of super glue. We really do. <laughs> yeah, we do. They love us. Uh, but, uh, and even Super Sculpey is, is a pretty personal choice. It might not be your exact thing. You know, there's wed clay, there's Chavant, there's this monster clay now, Castellini. And a lot of a lot of these guys, like Paul and them, and maybe Toy is back there, uh, will 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 change their stuff over to wax at some point. Yeah. I think you can get tighter, the detailing, you can get finer. For us, we love this we love super sculpting and we like the, the feel of it when it's finished we're not we're not the really clean precise tight guys we're we're looser and we like this sort of raw or kind of organic feel maybe um and that you know obviously that's neither a good or a bad thing it's just the way we work also what's great about the aluminum foil is you can always press it in a little bit more or if it's really in the way you can just clip or some out you know it's almost like clay in a way that you can keep affecting it you know Okay. Anything else? Yeah. So do you recommend like classical Absolutely. Sure. You have to. It's super important to go back and look at that stuff. Right. Uh, and Michelangelo specifically. Yeah. Uh, and we love Rodin, which is obviously more recent. But the again, that's the freaky thing about them is that they were chiseling away the negative space. And I mean that's beyond me. I mean it's it's really it's almost a different, it should be called something else because it's totally uh, different from what we do, you know. They we start with 15 feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, uh, but we, we, Bernini, the drapery and that stuff, that's the guy to look at for drapery. Um, but we worship all those guys and you have to study it for composition and for dynamics, uh, the, the posing. There's all a lot of, of a lot of, uh, interesting rules with the uh, a lot of the classical stuff they'll have one side of it will be totally calm you know and the other side will be action whatever the knees bent or whatever it is so there's a lot to take from that uh, that can be used yeah that makes sense um, okay anything else is that the same with the eyes because I noticed you guys make one eye different from the other mm -hmm. yeah I do we do do that uh, <laughs> That's how human faces are, you know. Mm -hmm. They're, They're more very, asymmetrical. More than you would think, you know. Um, okay. Also, you can get two different emotions, which is good for like a guy or a, a monster. You can make one eye kind of look crazy mad, and then the other eye look kind of sympathetic, and it's kind of it's funner, it's more interesting, you know. With the women, uh, they have to be more symmetrical to be beautiful, you know. Uh, so it's good to keep everything real. Uh, level and symmetrical as possible, but with the guys, you know, you can do the eyebrows down, and it's. I think um, female anatomy is judged more brutally 
because it's it's more obviously wrong when you see it. You know, you you want it to be pleasing and beautiful and, and smooth and flow in a certain way. And if and if it's not right, it jumps out off the table at people. You know. Yeah, a guy or a monster has way more yeah, leeway. And exactly. There can be different bumps, and you know it's easier for him to be gruesome, and it's it's okay. Yeah. Gruesome women don't sell as yeah. sculptures, <laughs> or very very rarely anyway. Anything else? I'll get him working. What was our favorite project? We're pretty happy about the Wayne Barlow fight we just did recently. Yeah. It's kind of our first licensed thing. Uh, not our first licensed thing, but the first, first thing we've produced. Right. That's someone else's character. We're big and, fans uh, of his, so. And that, that's really cool. But uh, like I said, we grew up on comics. And so some of these comic projects, we got paid, but we literally would have done it for nothing yeah. to do it. Um, Grindel Prime. Yeah. Grindel is a com dark horse comic by a guy named Matt Wagner, and um, Randy Bowen, who owns Bowen Designs, offered us that. We almost flipped out because that, that we really loved that comic. We told him. We actually wrote, we, we put it into the contract that Matt Wagner had to call us. Yeah. Okay? That's what kind of comic nerds we are. <laughs> and uh, I think that's kind of important, regardless of what area you're in. For us it is. I think there are some people like in this industry, the comic statues in particular, that are doing it because that's where the money is. You know what I mean? They, they get a job, like I was talking about, they get the juggernaut job and they have to Wikipedia this and, and learn about juggernaut. You know, it's not like that with me and Joe. You know, uh, that's, that's, that's where we come from. And even, even above and beyond movies. We love movies, but that wasn't really our impetus to start sculpting it. It was, it was comics and fantasy art, Frazetta. Yeah, we really wanted to draw the X-Men. I think that was our delusion of grandeur. Yeah, and then, and then we weren't good enough. We, we were not great, like I said. So we kind of snuck in the industry through the back door. <laughs> and we often refer to ourselves as comic book sculptors, whatever that means. You know? Yeah. Um, Anything else? What about um, movie concept art or gaming art? Would you guys dabble on that? We've done some video games in the past, uh, and, and that was fun. In the day, they needed sculptures to scan the sculpture into the game, and then they would animate it from there. Now it's all ZBrush. It's all files. It's all.